Hello everyone. So today uh, in this AI system that we have developed for NPC characters, I am going to uh, improve the flanking behavior and shooting behavior based on the range of the fi firing range of the weapon hold by the NPC character. And today we are going to look into how to uh, set up qu EQS query parameters and flanking parameters Fla uh, flanking EQS core configs to match the firing range of the weapons so that we can make sure that an offensive AI character will always try to remain within the firing range of the weapon when they are taking cover and when they are shooting and work while working around the enemy right so in this NPC characters the AI mode is offensive that means he should be trying to attack in an offensive mode rather than a defensive mode but here when the character has the flamethrower he can't shoot at me if he is uh, in a range that is further from the range of the flamethrower uh, as we said it before in the last episode it is 500 so in the offensive mode even though the character is trying to find covers and trying to attack the player even in the offensive mode he should always make sure that all the positions that is calculated through the environment core system should stay within the range of the weapon he hold so to do that we can use let me open the main behavior tree and this is the shooting part and in the shooting part if the mode is offensive this is the query trans this cover location you are finding cover location this is the defensive mode cover location so in the offensive mode let me open this here i have set the grid half size to 2000 but the problem in this case is when the half size is 2000 that uh, the generated grid is around the courier that means the AI character who is using this behavior tree so how do we make the character always move to a location that uh, that is within the uh, firing range of the gun so actually I don't think it is a good idea to change this into the locked actor because uh, that would make all the NPC characters to have the same grid which is not a good idea but still i need them to move closer so here uh, let's add another run eqs query but here let me duplicate the same eqs Go, go range. So here I'll make the generate around the log data and instead of this half size let's add a data binding using query parameter simple grid grid size okay now 
uh, here. Here, scrolling. Um, Corey should he EQS cover go to range? Right now, here under Corey config, we have simple grid size as the value. Let's use weapon range. So I think that will give point this whatever the value in the weapon range into this grid size parameter. So also this should execute only if the only if the inverse of this condition is satisfied. Is in range BP decorator. So let me add decorator is in range target actor is target actor range is weapon range and inverse condition so if this is false this part should be executed and after that we should move uh, Board key is set to move to location, it's fine. And right, we should move also. So, I think we would need a sequence here. Looks like he's stuck in some loop. Let's see what's going on. Nice oh, shooting and flanking. So in the shooting part. Oh right. It is only executed after this part. Yeah, maybe this is not the best way to handle this situation. So, break clean to select. Let me break this. And here in the offensive mode, um, <laughs> let's say. Let's define a new generate location. So just like this noise location. 
let's check the implementation of that a bit yeah it's like this so yeah what i'm going to do is let's give a location that is within the range of the within the firing range of target character instead of giving the exact location of the character so let's see cqs context noise location a parent child of environment core context blueprint base so qs context Blueprint base. Great. Great center. So we should override, provide single location so now we have the courier object and courier actor we also need to access the current weapon of the courier actor and its range so range get attack range from CLM BPI character right we need this and also we need the locked actor so we can get their controller and get locked actor from the locked actor we can get actor location right and then we can find the direction from the courier actor to this actor so the location of the courier actor and then direction from the look actor to courier actor direction get unit direction vector then if we multiply this with the range if we multiply with the range of the weapon that is held by the AI character we can get a location that is reachable or that is within the firing range of the NPC character to the target character so add the locked actor location into this So this is the new uh, context grid center so if we so I think this would increase the chance of getting the NPC character uh, location that is within the shooting range of the gun he has so we can use this CQS context grid center in when we run this we this cover offensive grid center right And that is for the offensive mode. For defensive, I think what we already have is fine. 
also what about flanking now this is already calculated around the log tactile so this is fine ah, but here also we I think we should bind this grid size simple grid grid size to the weapon range Just now, ah! right now he is always trying to stay within the shooting range. Great. Actually, he haven't stopped shooting. That's why. Okay, now he stopped. And I think he should come out. Let's see what's going on in the searching. Okay. So I will continue to improve upon this same system, same AI system and for now I am going to stop this episode right here. And thanks for watching, see you in another episode, goodbye.